Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Ridge Community Church podcast. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors at the Ridge, and our vision is to bring the hope of Jesus into every home. So we want to bring you something hopeful and helpful for your everyday life. Whether you've been following Jesus for a while or you're still trying to figure out exactly what you do believe about God. Now, you'll find on this podcast things that'll help with conversations about marriage and parenting and mental health and work, practical things to help you in your faith journey and a lot more. So whether you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app or you're watching on YouTube, be sure to follow and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the hopeful and helpful conversations. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Ridge Podcast. I'm excited to share with you a little bit of a unique conversation. This uh, next week, obviously, is the election. And with it, there is going to be a lot of really charged emotions, a lot of challenging situations that we're probably going to be faced in, whether that's interactions with individuals in person, conversations that we have, whether it's interactions that we have with other people online, whether it's just how we are in our own emotions as, you know, wherever we sit on the political spectrum, how things we're interacting with, what people say to us, what people say to other people, the results of the election next week and how we respond to it. Um, all of those things really do affect our life. They reflect our relationships. They, in some ways, especially how we treat other people are going to reflect, you know, how those other people see Jesus reflected from us. And so my encouragement, uh, more than anything, is that we take a little bit of a time and we just remind ourselves, hey, how are we going to be treating people over this next week, over this next month as this election situation happens? How are we going to be responding and managing our own emotions, regardless of what they, what they are, as we interact with people, as we interact with people online? And my hope is that this reminder and this conversation and the, and the different pieces that we talk about um, really serve you well. They serve you well to engage with people in a loving way and remind us all what our priority is and who really is in charge. Um, throughout this whole season, because regardless of whoever wins, Jesus is still God. And he still sacrificed himself for us. And he still loves every single person that we interact with. He loves us so deeply and cares for us so much. And we need to see other people as children of God. So um, before I before I ramble on here anymore, uh, let me just get started with what we're going to do. So uh, I, I've taken the chance to kind of cut up some previous conversations that I've got to have with Mark White about different things related to politics, how we interact with people, how we can kind of think through some of these things. And my hope is that this, like I said, this serves as a reminder for what this next week and month can look like for you. Um, and perhaps it's just some encouragement on how to view things. So we're going to start off just with a question that I got the chance to ask Mark about why he thinks that politics are so divisive. And hopefully this can set the stage for how we think through some of those interactions with people when we're feeling the division. Um, sometimes exposing the reason behind something can help us work through it. So this is uh, part of my conversation with Mark White. I, I thought about this question a little bit because I figured you were asking it. <laughs> and so, uh, I, I think I think this is a multi-layer answer. Okay. And even in my answer, I'm not giving all of it. I think there's even more layers to it. Hmm. And I think it's a couple. One, I think it's 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 the political strategy of both parties. It's fear and anger. Hmm. And that's the strategy. Those raise money. Hope and change don't raise money. Okay. Hmm. Hope and good, everything's good, doesn't raise money. It just doesn't. Fear and anger does. Uh, the other thing is, is that with the advancement of technology, you know, with the fear and anger, I mean, we're bombarded all the time. We just see it all the time now. Yeah. No matter where we are, it is, it's always there. And then we have algorithms, which now we all create our own echo chambers. And so now it's the constant voice of I'm right, they're wrong. And so, you know, that's a part of all that. Uh, a third thing is, I, here's what I just call it. And this is not to be demeaning. I think this is just the reality. And, and most pastors in the country would say the same thing. It's a lack of discipleship that's mm -hmm. causing it. That that most people who follow Jesus, their political filter is over their Jesus filter. And so because it's just basic stuff when we go, when you follow Jesus, here's how you treat people. And uh, it's because it's how you treat people matters to God. 
more than being right, but we're seeing, you know, in the church world and all that stuff, that's out the window. Uh, we know that looking at major issues that uh, of our day, even, uh, that Jesus wasn't a Democrat and he wasn't a Republican, but we act as if he was. And then we, because we have our one or two issues that we hold on to, and then we place Jesus there. And then we think like, okay, this is how Jesus is. And he was this, and he's on my side. Actually, he's not on our side. And so there's a lack of discipleship. And I just scratched the surface on that one. That one, we can just keep going, 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 going. <laughs> and then, you know, just for the kind of final one is, I think this is really important. Here's how I, here's how I say it, John. Yeah. We, we don't elevate ourselves above the fray. And here's, here's what I mean by that. Hmm. When you elevate yourself above all the noise and the, and the arguments and the, you know, all that stuff, here's what we find. It's, there's a spiritual enemy we have who seeks to, to divide. And so he loves this, especially with God's people. He loves it. And, um, and then, you know, not only that, but we see throughout the scriptures that sometimes God would allow things to happen and, uh, that were against what you would think that he would want to happen, but it was his way of either going, Hey, uh, I'm going to get your attention or, you know, whether it be divine judge, whatever it might be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we don't think even along that line, hey, we don't go, what is God trying to say here? Every president that gets elected, I always go, okay, God appoints leaders. So that means God allowed that to be. And I always go, what what is what might God be trying to say to us because he has allowed this person to be in leadership of our country, no matter what the party is, okay? Yeah. And uh, what so – if we believe that God appoints leaders, we don't have to agree with those leaders, but you know what it is? We are called to pray for them. We are called to, to handle things differently because we really believe that. So I call it, we, we don't elevate ourselves above the fray. We stay in the, in, in the fray. And as a result, we don't see these higher things uh, that God would want us to see based on a biblical worldview. So Mark said in that clip, a lot of really, I think, really helpful, impactful things, uh, but the ending is just so strong. I would just elevating ourselves above the fray, above the chaos, above uh, the really difficult interactions that we have with people so that we're not really stuck into the the, the hard um, emotional responses that we can have when we disagree with other people. And, and, and the other challenge there is that whoever wins, if you're a follower of Jesus, our call is to be praying for them. And um, if your emotions are in a place where you can't do that, um, and then maybe it's, that's just a prayer to God and saying, God, help me get to that point where I can, I can pray for this person. Um, cause the reality is that we do want God to move through them wherever they are on the political spectrum. And we want them to lead our country well, and we want more people to follow Jesus because of our response and even how we talk about those, um, those people. The next clip that we're going to head into is once again for Mark, um, and he's going to be sharing on just this idea of how we often respond with anger in situations uh, and how particularly when we find out we're wrong or we don't want to be wrong on a specific issue. And I think this really sets the stage for a conversation about humility and how do we go into this period where we have, we probably have strong views and strong responses to a lot of these different political points and talking points. Um, and we just need to hold all of them with humility. And I think that also allows us to give grace to other people. And, you know, one of you probably is right. Maybe you're both wrong. But when we have humility, it leads to understanding and understanding really sets the stage for some reconciliation and helps prevent, I think, some of the the rifts that can cause uh, that can happen in, in these relationships. And so um, this is the next clip with Mark. Why do we look at it as being wrong or right? Why can't we look at, I mean, there's, we all have examples yeah. of where we maybe believe something, let's just say socially. Hmm. And then as we grew as a person or grew as a Jesus follower, especially, yeah. we were like, you know what? I, there's more to that than what I thought or than what I knew or what I based my decision on. And so as a result, uh, I may have changed my opinion or may have changed my belief in that. That's not being right or wrong. That's called growth. Mm. And so when you're, when you see it as right and wrong, like you said, and you're thinking you're going to grab onto that baby and go, I can't, because I don't want to be wrong. Mm. Um, you already are. We all have stories that we are. It's okay. <laughs> Instead have the humility to just go, 
man, as, as I take steps with Jesus, I'm going to grow into things that I'm currently not into. Yeah. And that's okay. There's yeah. freedom in that. So I, like I said, I just, I get it. And there's also st- uh, the same guy that you're talking about also has things that say um, people like to be angry about something and hold on to that anger. Mm. Hence the political strategy of fear and anger. Yeah. Is there anything with with kind of being that you mentioned the bombardment and it's almost like a cultural, I don't want to say identity, but it's like this cultural kind of, that's the culture right now, right? Is the anger, the fear, the pick aside. Yeah. Um, when you're being bombarded by that, how do you, like you mentioned, rise above? How do you tune that out? Is it limiting the voices? Is it recognizing what it is? What does that look like? Yeah, I think it, it is. Rec- that's why I said above the fray. Yeah. You have to recognize that for what it is. Mm. And you also, I, I do this fun thing every once in a while. I'm kind of a political junkie to some ways. I just, I, there's so much you learn about culture <laughs> yeah. and people through the political process. Okay. And so I've, I've always enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. But when you are, I, I did this. So I did this thing where um, I watched a couple clips on Fox News and then MSNBC back to back. And, uh, and they was like, it, I, I matched up their, the, the buttons that were talking at the time and all that stuff. And here's the interesting thing. They were talking about the same things, the same topic. And, uh, and so the one was like, we care about freedom. And then the other one was like, we care about freedom and we got to fight for freedom. And the other ones, we got to fight for freedom. And they had, they were talking about the same stuff. Yeah. And it was just really funny to watch and go, oh gosh, you know, we have, we got to rise above that. So yeah, limiting that, understanding that, yeah, the more you watch of something, the world, it's going to create a echo chamber for you. Mm-hmm. And it's meant to, because they want to keep your attention and they want to keep you clicking. And so I think it's things like that. And I also think there's this idea of just having the humility to go, I don't have all the answers. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great reminder uh, of how we can respond to people who have different viewpoints from us just this season is reminding ourselves that we don't have all the answers. We may think we have the perfect opinion on all the issues and all the different items, but um, the reality is we don't have the same life situation that somebody has that may have influenced why they think through things a certain way or what their perspective is on a certain thing. And so having that humility, I think, allows us once again to give grace to the people that we're interacting with. Now, this next clip from Mark is talking about, hey, but what about those really strong issues that we really believe in? What do we do when we have strong opinions on certain particular issues that we feel very strongly about and they really color a lot of our decision making? Mark's going to share on how we respond when we have that. I think there are some issues that as Jesus followers, we're called to care about. All right. Mm Mm-hmm. And so that is okay. And, and some of those are part of our stories. Yeah. And I think that's okay as well. There's nothing wrong with that. And that might be a passion point of ours. Once again, I think that's fantastic. I think the, where we have to take it to the next, take the next step is in how we approach those things, how we communicate those things, Mm -hmm. how we treat people and talk about those things. And I think that's where, just being wise, uh, really loving people because God loves all people. It's it's not just he loves one side and all that stuff. And I think that's where the stuff, and, and here's the other thing. Here's what I've noticed is that most people vote because they have two, two or three issues that are important to them that sometimes benefit, most of the time benefit them. Yeah. And they're good with that. And so they're going to vote for that because of that very reason. I think we need to realize that. Yeah. And the other other side, whoever the other side might be, they have two or three issues that they have the same filter, mm. the same filter. This next clip I think is super important um, because it's going to outline how we can kind of check some of our emotions when we start to feel ourselves feeling escalated, when we feel our emotions rising to the top and they may start to influence how we're talking to people, or frankly, even talking to people that we think are not listening as much. Maybe it's how uh, you're talking to your kids, your spouse, and um, you're talking about other groups of people. And even in those moments, just because that group isn't listening doesn't give us the freedom to talk about one of the people that Jesus died for in that way. 
And so uh, Mark's going to help us realize, hey, how, what do we do with that? Uh, those emotions, how do we recognize those things in ourselves? And where, where do we go from there? I think as a culture, we're not really good at stopping and <laughs> assessing our responses. Mm-hmm. We're not really good at it because our responses have become normalized, even if they're divisive or explosive and things like that. So there's got to be, once again, if the filter is you want to follow Jesus and you want to have God's heart for people, which he has a deep heart for people, okay? If you want to do that, then we got to have the discipline mm-hmm. and the humility to look at some of our responses and go, ooh, you know, why am I responding that way? So for example, if you're getting defensive or angry, if you find yourself saying those people and all that stuff, if you're you're starting to do that, then you got to ask yourself, why am I responding that way? What's the real reason for my response? And it's not because they're wrong and I'm right. It goes further than that. Yeah. Uh, It might be, why are you more passionate about your political platform and party than Jesus's platform? And you got to ask yourself that question because most people, they will pull, most people who are politically passionate and they kind of, Jesus filters number two, they post about their political stuff more than they would ever post about the Jesus stuff. Hmm. And so that would be called an idol. Hmm. And that would be something that's pretty important for us to dig into because there's a lot linked in there, because as we know about idol worshiping and, and, you know, idols, anything we put ahead of God, uh, there's, there's reasons why we do that. And so you want to get at the heart of that. Uh, I'd also say, why are you fighting against people that Jesus died for? And I, you got to ask yourself that yeah. question. Well, because they are, okay, so you don't think Jesus had that issue in the New Testament? The people in the New Testament had that issue? They had it worse than us. Yeah, They were in Rome for crying out loud. All right. <laughs> they were killing their family members and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. And then why is being right more important than relationships being right? So there's some questions there that are very, very important questions that most, most Christians won't won't answer that are really politically charged yeah. because they don't want to get at the heart of that. They're justifying it with I'm right. Uh, this is where, this is where God would hold this position, all these reasons, but they don't answer or ask the most important questions. I imagine that's probably an opportunity. Like if you have some close trusted friends in your life where that's a great opportunity to like, I don't know, talk through some of those things with them, right? You got to trust them. Right. And so there's that element too. But I imagine like, hey, this is how I'm feeling about this thing. Does that seem justified? Does that seem, you know what I mean? Like, it would, you, would, would that be a fair process to go through? Uh, I think I think anytime you're slamming people yeah. or a group of people, it should be a red flag because one yeah. of the litmus tests for how we're growing with God is how we treat people. Yeah. And so if we're not treating people well or we're degrading people, whatever it may be, whether they're right or wrong isn't the issue. It is how we see people that's the issue. Yeah. Because if we see people through God's eyes, let's just say they hold a uh, a viewpoint that we know Jesus wouldn't hold, we're not going to get angry. It's going to be a different response. It really mm-hmm. is. And so it's not righteous anger. It's arrogant anger. Yeah, It's prideful anger. I think this is one of those challenging moments uh, based on Mark with, with what Mark was saying, where we ask ourselves, how do we see the group with the different political beliefs and affiliations from us. And uh, like he said, it's not necessarily about right or wrong. It's about how we see them and where our heart goes towards them. Is it anger? Is it uh, is it aggression? Is it hate? Is it belittling them? Is it demeaning them with the way that we talk or we think about them? And just once again, knowing that that's not how God views them. And they may be wrong and they may th- believe things that you think are, are really bad or whatever that is. But our response to them is still to be one out of love. And how we talk and how we think about them is something that we need to work on to control um, so that we don't act on those things and we don't harbor thoughts and emotions towards people that God wouldn't have. That's not what we're called to do. All right, so this next clip from Mark really focuses on how do we handle our conversations in the next uh, in the next week, the next month, 
you know, you're probably going to be talking with people about the election. I mean, if it's about specific topic, topics, maybe it's about the election as a whole. Um, and I think Mark gives some pretty good guidelines on one, maybe you shouldn't even have that conversation. And he'll kind of talk a little bit about that. But also, if you do have that conversation, what kind of posture do you go into it with that allows you to talk with, with people who may have a very different viewpoint than you do in a way that's helpful and doesn't ruin your influence and your relationship with that person? Here's Mark. Okay, so when you have a, go into a conversation, you know, you have, to, you have to go into it with define safe, remove the unsafe things have a posture of humility that, Hey, you're going to learn something from this, that the, that you can, they can teach you something in this conversation and then have perspective of, Hey, in the grand scheme of things, most of the stuff that we talk about that is un, that, that that's divisive. It just doesn't matter all that much. Okay. And then uh, I always tell people this, if you can't handle that, then don't have the conversation. Hmm. Or as I tell my kids, Hey, you can be right and still be wrong all at the same time. Because oh, that's good. Yeah. Because if, if, you know, Jesus said the relationship matters most. And so, hey, if you were right and the relationship ends up wrong at the end of your right conversation, then you ain't right. Yeah. And in, in today's culture, unfortunately, we can't have conversation because our opinion or our viewpoint matters more than the person. So if I'm going into one of those conversations, what like what types of questions should I be asking myself to evaluate if I'm able oh, to yeah, do that's that? A great question. I think you got to ask, why do you want to have this conversation? Really? And I always say, ask why five times, and then you probably get to the truth. <laughs> okay. I mean, that, that's yeah. really what it is. So you, you got to ask, why do I really want to have this conversation? Answer, why do I really want to have this conversation? And then you'll get to it. And if your conversation is to, well, I want to convince them my point of view and all that stuff, even in a, in a faith conversation, okay, which... When I have faith conversations, ultimately, I hope that, you know, someone is not a, not a follower. I mean, I hope to, they, they get there at some point, but I don't even go in there with that. I go in there with, if I can have a, create an environment where we can have a safe conversation and they open up about things and it's not in agreement with where I am, I look at that as a sacred conversation, man. That's trust just got, got built there. And so I'm like, man, that's really cool. God just worked. So you got to ask why you're having that conversation. And if the answers aren't for, hey, I really want to have an open conversation because I love and care about this person, don't have the conversation. I think that really elevates the bar on our conversations and really make sure that we're having these the uh, conversations on topics that can be really charged with a very purposeful way and very purposeful thought process. Why do I want to have the conversation? Um, and if it's about ourselves, then we really do need to check that conversation and just and just let it move on because we don't want to be losing influence with people. We don't want to lose our ability to uh, – we don't want to hurt our relationship because we've prioritized the wrong thing. Well, we've reached the last clip here, and it really focuses on how we can respond on Election Day and how can we make sure that we have our right – priorities and our mindset up as we head into that. I'll let Mark explain it, but really the heart behind this is where have you placed Jesus in your life? And um, that can really impact our emotional response to whoever wins on election day. First off, I think it's okay to support a political party. I mean, it's okay. All right. It's okay. So I'm not saying when I, when I say all that, that there's not a there's not a uh, a role or importance of politics in our in our world or things like that. I mean, leaders matter. I mean, we know right. that. Okay, so I'm not saying that. I think what I'm saying is let's talk about perspective and let's talk about priorities. And if your perspective is, man, if my political party doesn't win, I'm crushed. There's an issue there. If you're a Christian, that means you have put way too much stock and hope into a political party. And, and here's what I tell people about politics. Politics do a couple things. They legislate, they legalize, they create environments for the economy, and they provide protection. Okay. You know what's missing in that? The change of a heart. Hmm. And uh, a, a political party can't change a heart. Even if they change the platform perspective, they're still not going to change a heart. So by putting all of your, your hope in that, and, and most Christians will say, well, I don't. Yeah, you do based on your reactions. And uh, so the perspective issue is huge for that. 
And so it's okay to support and all that stuff, but let's put it in the proper perspective. And then I always tell, I always tell people this when, when their person loses, I always say, do you believe God is sovereign? And, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, he's in control and all that stuff. You know what that means? That means that he has allowed this person, whoever it is, you know, Democrat problem, to be in place. And so for you, as we're called to pray for leaders, to push back against that is to push back against the person that God has allowed to be in that position. And so once again, it's a perspective issue. So when we get hacked and we get mad, everybody else, we're actually channeling that towards God as well. Interesting. Yeah. So there's just a lot there. Keep the, keep the main thing. If, if Jesus is your priority, it'll change your approach because I mean, that's the new Testament a lot. Hey, how do we approach our world and live in our world? That's a mess and all that stuff. It should change our approach to politics and put it in the proper perspective. Making sure that Jesus is our priority really does help serve as this great reminder of what is most important on election day. And and yes, the re- election results are important, but if we care more about them than we do about following Jesus, than we do about how we help other people experience the hope of Jesus, then we really missed out on something. And I think we've missed out on what God has called us to do. Now, I don't want to belittle the results because they are important and there's a reason why we vote and we encourage you to vote and um, they matter, but they matter in a grander context of what Jesus is doing in the world and what he's doing in our lives. I would love it if you'd all, wherever you're at, um, just say this prayer with me. And I hope that as I get a chance to pray over um, this whole election season, that you'll find encouragement in it and um, that'll be helpful for you. Now, before I do that, I just want to say, Hey, if there's, if you're looking for some more specific resources on anything related to politics, we have a great, uh, website with lots of resources all over it that you can dive into some more specific questions. Maybe you have about uh, conversation things that you're looking for with people and, or just other conversations and podcast episodes that we've done previously. Um, I think you can get a ton out of those conversations, but I'm going to pray for us. Um, and then I'll close it down. So Jesus, thank you for everyone listening to the podcast today, everyone um, just in our in our country. God, we pray that you help just ease some of the tension and the um, just the vitriol that's happening between people as they talk to one another and as they comment on social media. Uh, we know that uh, you have something bigger for us in our lives and you have more hope for us in our lives than the negativity and just the incredibly hurtful things that people say. God, I just ask that you give us the strength to enter into conversations that we have with people to see the bigger picture. You give us peace in our hearts if we have fears about how the election will turn out, if we have fears about how people will engage with one another. God, just give us the strength and the peace to move past those things. God, we pray that your hand is in the election and that you direct it. Um, God, and you... uh, just how whatever happens, uh, that you give us the confidence to know that you are continually in control, that we can rely upon you and that our trust is to be placed in you and no one else. And that that is more secure than anything that we could gain from a person, a political office, a um, position, whatever it is. God, so we just ask you to, to move in our hearts and in our lives and, and just really help us with our emotions, how we say, and how we react to things. And maybe even give us opportunities to let our example of how we respond in this situation be just evidence of how much that we've experienced the hope of Jesus in our lives. And that people will see that. No one experience it too. Can we ask this in your name? Amen. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Ridge Podcast. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, rate and review uh, so that you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations.